Thank you to Adrian for this challenge. Now you may have noticed uh, Carl's subtle uh, comment in the challenge requirements that maybe the join wasn't super necessary since we're aggregating those student IDs or student names anyway. Uh, so we haven't done that in this solution workflow. So let's just take a look at the data to understand a little bit more about why we've made that change. So we've got our student IDs, their nationalities and which classroom they belong to. Um, and then in this other data set, we have their student ID and their name. So at this step in the aggregate step, we're going to aggregate that data just to count the students. So actually, we don't really need to know their names in order to count them. And we can see just visually in our view step that we have 48 rows here um, and 48 rows here. We can see that we have unique values for our student IDs and unique values for our student IDs here along with the names. So really, there's not really a lot of reasons um, to join up these two data sets. So that's why we haven't uh, quite followed the requirements of Adrian um, completely. But okay, so we have made that decision. Um, the next step is to look at our nationalities that we have and see that we've got some um, definitely misspelled country names. So we've got say China and China with a Y, uh, Egypt with an I and Egypt with a Y. Um, so in order to fix that, we're going to use the group values option. We're going to use group values and we're going to go to pronunciation. Since looking at them, um, they all look like something that we could pronounce similarly. So I go to pronunciation and I see it fixes it for China, Egypt and Mexico, but not quite for France yet. So this is a chance to play around with the um, sensitivity of our grouping. So we'll just make it, you know, a bit more there. Um, so the France is now made up of both France and France. Cool. Um, so we do that in the next step. So I'm just deleting that change for now. But we do that in this step here to make the nationality nice and clean. And now it's time to aggregate our data. So grouping by nationality and classroom and counting the distinct student IDs in each of those um, classrooms. Next up, we're doing a rank. So we're going to our student ID field where we have our count of students. Uh, we're going to the menu there and going create calculated field rank. Um, and I'm just going to open the visual editor to show what that looks like. So we leave it in descending order there. We're grouping it for each classroom so that we can tell what the dominant um, nationality is in each of those classrooms. So we do that and then we're going to filter it just for this number one rank. So I click on the number one and I say keep only. Um, and that will give us this end result um, of Brazil and the USA being the dominant nationalities in classroom E and A respectively. And then I just renamed the student ID uh, field so that it's in sync with the um, solution in the challenge. So thanks again for that um, challenge, Adrian, and thank you to you for watching.